The idea of Star Citizen is a dream come true for a lot of gamers. A beautiful MMO world with spaceships, dogfights, an economy, industry, PvP, PvE, as well as first-person shooter elements that were appeal to a range of players and styles. It is, however, complicated, or at least a lot to take in, especially for players jumping into the alpha now or taking a look at what they can do in the future. How do you start out? What do I do in the verse? What can I do? What pledge should I get? I want to get the right pledge. Should I spend a little extra money to get an advantage over people? There will be a multitude of roles in the verse to experience and test once the persistent universe is out. At the moment, at the time of writing, we're in Alpha 1.1.1 and awaiting the FPS module in 1.1.2. The PU, the persistent universe, will debut most likely at the end of 2015. So what can you do? Well, this series is going to talk about the different types of role there are in the verse, what ship packages are available, and just briefly go over the different types of mission and that sort of stuff when you'll be starting out in the verse. It's all going to be a mixture of stuff that I've um, read into from uh, all of the 10 for the chairmans, uh, reverse the verse, around the verse, and all the information that's available. I'm just going to talk about that and make elaborations from that where available or educated guesses, and as much as possible, keep to the facts as far as I know. Today we're talking about dogfighting and mercenaries, more specifically starting the role as a one or two pilot fighter in the verse. So you want to be a fighter pilot. In the verse, you can make credits in a few different ways, and there are also a few quite good different ships that could work for you. The Aurora series, cheap, entry-level ships. Though the Aurora LN is quite combat capable, the Auroras are slow though. The Mustang series, again entry-level, but a lot faster than the Aurora series. Also, the Delta is again pretty damn combat capable. The 300 series, great balanced fighters, with the 350R being an amazing interceptor choice as well. The Hornet series, close support combat. Think military kind of grade components. These are very good at slugging it out in a battle and very good for dogfighting, fighting, um, pretty much any combat based role. The Cutler series, suitable for a crew of between one and three, slower than the other fighters though, but very versatile and extremely multi-role as a ship. Especially good for pirating or militia or crews that kind of want to try a bit of everything. Again, the Freelancer series is a great multi-crew ship that gives you some very versatile specialised choices in the series for mercenaries. Take a look at them. Uh, other ships that are worth a mention, the Gladiator, which is the current missile boat, that might be changing though um, quite heavily. There's the M50, which is a great interceptor. There's an Avenger, which is a great bounty hunter ship. The Gladius, which is a really great light dogfighter. The Cathal Ull, which I can't pronounce properly, which is going to be another interesting interceptor dogfighter kind of ship. I don't even know how that's going to work yet. And then you've got the Vanguard, which is going to be a much more heavier fighter, which is going to be very suitable for pretty much any dogfighting, fighter, escort mission role. It's, it's going to be a very powerful ship, that Vanguard. All these ships can be outfitted to what you need them to do, though some are going to be more suitable for others in certain types of missions. And all these missions and all these jobs and all these ideas when you're in the verse are going to have a, a risk-reward scale of some sort. And you can work your way up to the more high-paid missions, the harder missions, from any entry-level ship. It's going to be a game where you can do anything in the verse, even starting out at the lowest possible rung. So remember that. You do not have to spend all your money on ships if you don't want to. But that said, some people will, and some people will fall in love with ships and want to start the verse with them. Missions in-game are going to be set by a mixture of players and NPCs. NPCs will base their missions that they, they put up for for players to do based on their needs. If a trade route keeps on getting attacked in an area, then the missions might come out um, with like escort missions in that area or take out the pirate bases in that area, that sort of thing. Players will also set jobs for players. We're gonna talk very generally about missions that have been discussed or alluded to in the past and what you're likely to see as starting out with a fighter or as a fighter or I want to be a dogfighter, what can I do kind of thing. Your standard clear out missions. These are gonna be missions where you're sent to an area to kill a load of vandal, uh, pirates or some other threat. Probably going to work very similarly to Vandal Swarm does at the moment. There will be varying missions to clear out trade routes, assault enemy bases, remove pirates from an asteroid field. These could be NPC given or player given. You could get rewards in bounties per ship killed or a single payoff 
once you complete the job. They're likely to vary in difficulty and amount of ships required to complete them safely and power of ship. I mean, a vanguard's going to have a much better job in a large open area against a base or against a small operating area than it would, uh, than a 325A would. But a 325A would possibly do better in an asteroid field. So you're likely to get more of a description of what's going on and like, oh, we need to assault this base in an asteroid field. Don't take a big ship in. So there are going to be many solar opportunities here as well as group opportunities and dual crawl opportunities and that sort of stuff. My thoughts are that at an entry level though, an Aurora LN is a good choice at this kind of mission. I personally would be flying my 325A Gladius or Super Hornet because I like to think that these missions work pretty well across the board on all these type of missions that clear out missions. Especially the Super Hornet is kind of built for them, um, especially the harder ones. Some players are going to see these missions as a grind, while others are going to love them. Protecting and escorting ships. Players, NPCs and corps will require escorting of some of their ships some of the time. They could be mining ships in high-risk areas, they could be cargo transports or info runners that could be attacked, or even carriers moving sector, setting up traps for pirates, loads of different escort protection missions that you might have. Some high-risk jobs are likely to net you a lot of money in this category. I suppose all of the jobs are, that kind of goes without saying. Um, but you do need to successfully protect your charge in this instance. Also, different ships will be more suitable than others in these given circumstances. You might want to take a faster interceptor style ship if you're supposed to be protecting fragile ships in a convoy, maybe like a 350R or an M50. Uh, a tanky ship like a Hornet might be able to take a better beating and repel attackers. Um, or even if you're like uh, trying to ambush pirates or lure them into attacking convoy, maybe a Ghost Hornet's a better idea. That makes it look like the, the convoy's undefended. In some situations, you might be able to make some credits on transporting small, expensive objects, or data running, or protecting a single person, an individual transport for a high-level VIP or something, as long as you've got the fighting skills to be able to protect your charge. These are likely to be uh, similar to escort missions, but you're literally just protecting yourself, or having to work out a route they're going to get the least trouble. Um, they also might be time-based in the future, where you have to try and beat um, or you get paid based on how quickly you get to a, to a target system or whatever. Um, it's likely just to be simple as bringing something from A to B. Fast like ships like a um, M50 or 350R or possibly even the Herald might be so suited to this role better. Arr, you want to be a pirate! So, if you want to be a small scale pirate, maybe operating solo or as a pair or with maybe just a couple of friends, and you like dogfighting, then using a 300 series cutlass or freelancer could really make miners and transports and less defended people really regret meeting you. The idea is that you demand money off the ships or you'll kill them. You might also just want to blow them up and salvage them, rob them. With some ships like miners it's probably worth trying to get payments off them than trying to loot them. They're likely to have just have a massive amount of ore which you're not going to be able to transport very well unless you're in a giant pirate ship of some kind. But like the Cutlass you want money off them. You want to be able to quickly kill the, someone and salvage them, get money off them, run away so that the law doesn't come to get you. Sometimes as a pirate you're going to have to fight off escorts and bounty hunters and also bring on the hurt to some miners that don't believe that you're going to kill them. Be careful though, you're going to become a target of bounty hunters and do good citizens. Bounty hunting. Now this is primarily suited to the Avenger if you want to do this solo that comes with cryostasis pods as standard to chuck in people that you've bounty hunted if you want to bring them back alive that is. Bounty hunting will be contracted killing and arresting of players or NPCs. Some of these missions might be to track down a mark to a planet where you have to murder or capture the target and they might be quite complicated especially if it's a clever player running away. So in some situations some first person shooter skills may be required as well. But for players doing this as a role, it's likely to be a mixture of tracking, fighting and stealth to get the best results. A Hornet tracker or a freelancer duh, may come in handy as well to track down tricksy bounties. Group clearing. So there's going to be large missions where you're going to need multiple people or your corp might need people to clear a large enemy base, wipe out large fleets, um, capture large ships, big PvP actions. Manpower is going to be required for these missions. Mercs are going to be regularly 
regularly required and it can be quite lucrative, although very dangerous. There's even likely to be jobs where you're literally just said, can you protect this for a couple of hours by at least from players or corp mates or even possibly NPCs. They're likely to be quite boring jobs, um, but it will be like, we're logging off guys, um, can you protect the, the Idrises and the cab while we're gone kind of thing. There, there's going to be calling for people doing that, especially in large corporations where you're going to need the manpower, you're going to need people to be looking after the stuff while other people are offline. And joining a corp, there's loads of corporations in the verse already, but finding one that supports what you're doing is important. Do you want to be a fighter all the time? Do you want to be a fighter on a carrier? Do you want to be in large battles? Do you want to be in a small group of pirates? What time zone are you in? How dedicated are you to playing? Do you want to play in a roleplay guild? Uh, or do you want to play um, totally out of character? chat on um, uh, chat on the forums all the time? And uh, what do you, How do you want to play and what do you want to do? When joining a court, read their literature and message them asking them questions about how they're planning to operate. Make sure you like the guys, make sure they're doing what you want to do. There's loads of other choices out there if you don't like what they're doing or you want to do something else. If you want questions answered, ask someone. Corp play is going to be a real big part of Star Citizen, but for some it's not what they're after and they may prefer to be the lone wolf and you can totally do that too. So there is a load of possibilities in Star Citizen for a, a fighter, a starting fighter, and you're not tied down into any one role anyway. Nothing's mutually exclusive. Starting off as a mercenary may appeal to a lot of people, especially when they haven't chosen a corp, or they really like how the dogfighting in Star Citizen Alpha 1.1.1 currently plays. There's going to be a lot of variety, choice, and adventure to be had in this role. So something else that a lot of pilots are going to have fun with, especially in combat ships and outfitting, is literally tweaking and outfitting their ships for the missions at hand. Working out what works best, the best equipment for the money that they currently buy, um, what's the job going to be about, is there enough skill in the weapons you're using, um, are, you, um, are you able to take on any challenge that that mission might throw at you. This is going to heavily vary on each mission type, what ship you're using, um, and sometimes going to be a bit of luck involved there as well. If you like the idea of starting out as a mercenary or dogfighter and don't really have a massive plan of what you want to do yet other than you want to shoot ships and do a bit of everything, my suggestion and from personal preference would be get yourself an Aurora LN. Although slow, they are cheap, reliable, upgradable, a great ship to get you into murking and fighting. Only $45 for this ship and package. Um, and if you throw in another few dollars, you might actually consider getting a 325A. Um, these are $70 for the ship and package, and it's a really, really great combat ship that's quite versatile, incredibly upgradable, and currently one of my favourite ships in Arena Commander um, against even much higher level ships like the Super Hornet. Um, I, I think that it comes with great stock weaponry, and it's pretty fast, um, and it suits pretty much any fighter role really well. It must be stated in I've, I've, in my script here, I've got it in big capital letters that are also in bold. You do not need anything more than a starter ship and everything will be obtainable in the game, isn't mutually exclusive. You might want to get all of these ships because you might want to do all of these roles in different ways eventually. It's a game that all you're doing now is pledging to support. Although getting a starter package at the moment is a very cheap way of getting into the game before they assume, I'm gonna assume they're gonna raise the price because you're buying the game at the moment. You're buying the game as well as a ship for these packages. So just remember that. Once you have your starter ship, it's definitely worth renting out with REC, the uh, rental equipment credit currency that you can earn in Arena Commander and trying out the Aurora LN the 325A, the Super Hornet, the Gladius, and the Avenger, and pretty much all the other ships, but those are ones I'd really think about looking at if you're thinking about being a dogfighter or a fighter or a multi-role fighter. Um, it can give you a better feel for if you want a fast fighter or if you prefer utility or armor. They are adding more ships and variants to the game still, like the two-seater starter ship series uh, and the va variants for the uh, Avengers, for example. They are all ships you can work towards and get as well. No star citizen ship has it all. And that's important to remember. No ship can have it all. They're all gonna be suitable for different roles differently. Enjoy the verse. Don't spend too much money on ships. Keep that money for upgrading your computer so you can get the most frames per second. Anyway, guys, I hope that was informative or at least interesting. You take care. I'll see you in the verse. Please tell me if you enjoyed this video as an idea because I'll do a series on it or 
I, I like podcasty stuff, but and at the moment there's not much I can talk about meta-wise because I'm waiting for Star Marine to come out. Um, and apologies for no like uh, videos being up for the last couple of days. I've had a really horrible cold and hungover and cold hungover. Anyway, you take care, guys. I'll see you in the verse.